Welcome to the Mike and JD Show YouTube channel. Thank you for being here. I want you to do me a big favor before you check out this clip. I want you to hit the like button. I want you to throw in a comment and make sure you're a subscriber to this channel. And then I want you to share this video with your friends. Help us defeat the algorithm. And then if you like this content and you appreciate this content, please head over to patreon.com slash the Mike and JD Show and support the show. That is how we actually get funded to be able to do this. So we thank you very much for being here. Um, and now enjoy the clip. Now, Matt Hardy, he has not re-signed. He has made it very clear to anybody within shouting distance that he is a complete, total, and unadulterated free agent. Um, that said, I don't think anybody takes him on besides TNA. It's very clear that this is the perfect place for him. It really is. Uh, I just don't see him going anywhere. And... Um, and maybe maybe WWE try it, you know, tries to give him another shot. But I, I think that like if they did, he, he would probably be a producer or something like that. That's that's where I see him. I, I just don't see him like AEW. They, he said the AEW gave him an offer, but it probably was like pr like they probably lowballed him a little bit because they knew that they that they weren't interested. He just was never a fit there, and the broken gimmick was never a fit. And Big Money Matt's not a fit. Like big money, Matt, he was the TNA champion at one point, but the TNA was like on its ass and, and it was not like something was like over. I, I remember watching some of those episodes cause like, Oh, Matt Hardy's the champion. Let me check it out. Cause I was kind of out on TNA at the time and that big money, Matt wasn't very good. And he tried to bring that to, to AEW after the bringing the broken gimmick failed. Um, he tried to switch over to big money matt and that also failed because he was like the private party's manager and um yeah that just didn't work either and because he just couldn't go and i and big money matt had small room small room charisma it wasn't wasn't meant for like the big screen it just wasn't it, um it, it i don't even want to say that it worked in tna but it worked enough to get him the title belt but you know i just don't i just i, I might have to go back and rewatch some of that stuff like the the stuff before he got broken. Cause I just, I remember watching it back then. I just didn't think it was very good. I did. I, but then when he went broken, then he fucking like jumped off the screen as a mega star. And I thought that if, uh, once he left TNA and he immediately went into WWE, him and, uh, Jeff Hardy, both, I thought if they went as the broken Hardys, I like that would have been even crazier, but because he had that trademark fight with TNA at the time, he couldn't, he couldn't do it. Um, but I think if he would have went there as the, if they would have went there as the broken hardies, because they had so much momentum, like it was it, 2017 was wild time in TNA. They were a dying, dying company, but for some reason, this broken thing just blew up 2016, 2017, it just blew up and it was over and everybody was talking about it. And like Matt Hardy was like, he would be on like podcasts in full character and like the pod, like Jericho and like other podcasts, they would just play along. Um, and he would not break character the whole time. And, um, and then like him and him and Jeff would do it too. And they went everywhere and they went to ring of honor and like, were super over as the, as the broken gimmick. And like, they were selling tickets. They were over, they were over. And because they couldn't take the character with them by the time they got to WWE, they were a nostalgia act. And that flamed out quick because Matt couldn't go. He just couldn't. But that was part of the broken character that worked so well, as he was broken. He could not go. And so for all the, and I, I know I ranted on it already earlier this week, but for all the AEW fans that are making fun of TNA for signing or for bringing in Matt Hardy, he was just there in AEW. And when he was there, he couldn't go. And he couldn't go before he signed, right? He just couldn't. And he was on your television teleporting. Right. So who are you to make fun of TNA for bringing a guy in that you just had in for like three or four years, right? That AEW may or may not have given a contract extension offer to that he turned down, um, which I kind of find that I don't I, I find that hard to believe, to be honest with you. But I think what he's doing here in, in TNA is going to be perfect 
it's perfect for him. It really is. And I think it's perfect for TNA. I, I think they have a little bit of juice left in it. it. It got over to the Vegas audience. Not as over as it was whenever he left. I acknowledge that. Um, but I think once they start ramping up some of the vignettes and they're, they're going to do some house hardy stuff, I think Ruby's going to get involved and probably the kids. Um, I, I think I think this could be um, a, a great thing for the company. Um, problem is I just don't want him like around the world title, but I think they're going to do the moose match um and um dobby the brain heenan and of course god illa and lucha donchik and everybody else they've all taken credit for this idea um i think that you know matt hardy probably gets the title shot at against all odds and um but not not in montreal not in montreal i think moose beats hardy in in uh in chicago <clears throat> and then uh moose moves on to josh at slam anniversary i think i think that's the play um, because I just don't think you want Matt Hardy on top of a pay-per-view, especially in a building this, that could hold like up to four or 5,000 people They're guys, they're going to set that thing up for 1500, by the way, <laughs> they're, they're going to have that shit tarped off. <laughs> There's going to be a whole section that no one's going to be able to see on TV. So let's not think that the Verdun auditorium that, you know, they're like TNA is going to announce a sellout and people like look up the capacity. So sellout is different than capacity, by the way, they're going to look up. Yeah, it's probably gonna be sold out at like fifteen hundred or something. But, um, so yeah, I I don't think you want to do that because I he just can't be counted on to have a good match. But you can do some smoke and mirrors and have a fun thing with system and and moose and uh, and do the whole thing in Chicago at against all odds. And I think Chicago will be hot for the broken character. I mean, I'm just predicting it. I I don't know for a fact, but they're 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 typically a hotter audience anyway. I think they'll really get behind it. Uh, I do. Now this is coming up at Under Siege, Albany, probably not looking so hot. I, I don't know. They were pretty dead. And Albany is the crowd that, that did not care about Bobby Fish. <laughs> Hold on, swig of coffee for Bobby Fish. So uh, I, I would be worried about that. But um, Chicago, I, I can see them getting really, really behind it. And uh, against all odds being kind of a success with Matt Hardy and, uh, and Moose on top. And then other than that, uh, Crazy Steve, Crazy Steve is out the door, um, probably citing budget cuts because he had a tweet. And I don't know if it's still up, but he re responded to a tweet um, because uh, TNA fans, now that they have signed Santana and re-signed Steve Macklin, they're saying, they're saying, uh, LOL to the dirt sheets, LOL to the haters. Um, TNA is not doing budget cuts. And then Steve replied to him, was like, actually, they are doing budget cuts because that's probably why he got fired or why his deal didn't get renewed um even though he was a current title holder at dmc but still he was a title holder and they just didn't renew him so he's gone and i'm disappointed about that i i might be on the you know i might be one of the very few but i liked crazy steve and i liked the position he was in and i liked the heel turn that he had just did uh, i thought that was cool i liked the mask i liked the music like it seemed like they had something going for him like they had plans for him but uh, that was the Scott Demore regime. And so we're seeing that a lot of these people that the new regime don't really care for, they're letting them walk through attrition, meaning like when their contracts are up, they're just gone. So um, I would say some of the turnover has been really good, like much needed. And then some, I just don't agree like motor city machine guns. I felt like they should have fought to keep them, but those guys are doing a significant raise and they just, they just weren't going to play ball, I guess. And so, and I think they had their eyes on, you know, other people, but um but yeah, so they, you know, we're we're talking, we lost from the beginning of the year, or from when Scott Demore left, you know, Oleg and Dango, I'm cool, cool with that, and now, you know, Crazy Steve, uh, and then the Motor City Machine Guns, you know, um, some of those are tough, you know, I like Crazy Steve, but I don't think he was a significant part of the show. Uh, I don't think like, but I do think that like when people go to TNA, like he's kind of one of the guys that you know kids would like to see you know what i mean he's like he's got a cool character he's got a cool mask but i, I really don't ever think they merchandised it very well because i just don't think they have a legitimate merchandise department i think they have a t-shirt department right so they have people that just make t-shirt designs and that's not a merch department right so but when you have a cool mask and a cool character like that you know you can you can monetize that stuff and i just don't think they ever did a good enough job although i thought steve did a good enough job 
of creating the character. So I hope somebody break. I, I think he's probably like an NWA guy, especially because he's. I think he's local to Nashville, and I think NWA does a lot of stuff in Nashville. So um, I can see him going to NWA, and then, of course I see him coming back in like a year because Crazy Steve never leaves fully. So he'll, he'll pro like he'll probably like they'll do some dates in the south, and they'll just call him up and say, "Hey, can you come in?" And he'd probably show up. So. Uh, I don't think he's gone forever, but he's probably gone for now. Uh, and then the Grizzly Young Vets, they're out. Uh, removed from the roster. They're debuting with, uh, on to, I guess, tonight at AEW Collision. Um, wasn't a long run. It was a nice run. And uh, I am pretty disappointed in this one, too. Uh, but they were never assigned here. They were just per date guys. And that's the problem with per date guys is that you give them significant TV time. And then the moment that they get the offer that they're looking for from another company, they're just gone. Um, but they had their big three match series with the rascals that I, I thought was very good. And then I, they had some uh, trios matches with uh, Mustafa Ali that I thought were very good. Um, I thought this was a comp. These were guys that they could get behind and to build the division around. <clears throat> and now they're out. And the machine guns are out, and the tag team division is in dire straits once again. When it earlier in the year they were really strong, earlier in the year you had System Rascals, you had ABC Grizzly Young Vets, you had the Motor City Machine Guns, Time Machine, or whatever Time Splitters. Like they, they like different times those teams were teaming, um, and then of course you had Kevin Knight and Kushida. So you had you had some pretty cool teams, uh, and then like they just developed Speedball Mountain. Speedball Mountain was developed out of necessity to just have a pay per view match. It turned out to be really good. Um, so now, now no more no more Grizzly Young Vets. You got no more um, you got no more Motor City Machine Guns, and it looked like ABC was on the verge of a breakup. They might have rethought that now that the vets are out. <laughs> So you, so then you just got rid of like half your tag teams right there. And from what was once a pretty nice division and now we're, we're back in dire straits. So I think the subculture is coming back though. You can't have two British teams at once. You go, you can only have one at a time. <laughs> so I think subculture probably is going to return. I know that some of the, well, I think like one of those guys were injured and that's probably why they haven't been around in a while. But yeah, I, I think, I think that team probably comes back and then that might open up the door for Mason Mansoor to finally show up. But you know, the wrestling quality goes down quite a bit, but uh, you, you know, I think those guys are doing a good job of getting themselves over on the Indies. And I think people would probably get behind those guys. Uh, I really do. Uh, man, I'm, I'm 46 minutes in and I still haven't even, I still haven't even reviewed the episode. Um, I'll get, I'll get into it. Um, I already talked about all the WWE fireds earlier in the week, um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and touch on some of them right now. Jinder Mahal, Sangha, and Veer. A lot of people connecting them to TNA. A lot of the people are harassing me and bullying me over this whole thing. I do see um, one of those people possibly coming in. It's probably Jinder. I think it would be hilarious if AEW brought in Jinder. And that's, that's my hope. My hope is that he goes to AEW for the jokes, but also because he had that that Twitter feud that he didn't start by the way with Tony Khan, like Tony Khan kind of went after the guy because hook was getting a title shot and people were complaining because AEW has a ranking system and hook was not a part of that rank that he was not in, he was not a ranked person. So people use that to shit on the fact that hook was getting a title shot. I think, I think AEW's rankings are stupid because they just don't do a good job of it. So it's like, if you can't do it right, just don't do it. Um, it could be something that works, but they just don't do a good enough job, right? And it only, they only want to use the rankings when when it suits them. So it's not like a set, set in stone thing. And they kind of want to mix like MMA style rankings with college football rankings. So they reset the they reset the clock every year. And I was like, okay, that just doesn't work for me. There's no seasons in wrestling. But um, but some people love them, like Joe Lanza, my boss. He's a big fan. So um, so anyway, so people were complaining about hooking a title shot at Samoa Joe. And um, so he used that to attack the fact that Jinder Mahal also getting a title shot, assuming that everybody that says anything negative to him is a WWE fan. And that's just not true. Some of those people were AEW fans. Some of them. Some of them were probably WWE bots, right? Like the, the Chris Gentle Army coming after him. But a lot of them were just like, guy, I watch this show every week and this doesn't make any sense to me. 
because of of the expectations that you set out. When you set out expectations and then you go up against, then you go against those things, and people are like, "Hey, with a scratch in their heads, like, what are we doing?" Um, I understood what Hook was getting out of shot. I, just, but I, I just don't like like. I didn't really care for, but I, I also don't like Hook. I just don't think he's very good. So that was my whole thing. But he he came after Jinder Mahal, and Jinder Mahal kind of went back at him a little bit. So I think it'd be funny if he went to AEW. But um, you know, he his uncle is Gama Singh, uh, who used to be in TNA as a part of the Daisy Hit Squad. He was like their manager, and um, I could see Jinder getting a run here in TNA because TNA loves WWE fireds that are complete jokes that aren't any good and they love to bring them in. Jinder was once a world champion, but that was because they tried to go all in on leveraging India. And here's the problem that what they found out and they have completely given up on that territory, by the way, especially now that they're on Netflix. Now they're on Netflix. They don't need a TV deal in India because that covers it. Right. And um, there's no money in India. That's, like they got, they got a billion people. None of them have any money over in that country, according to like statistics, right? According to advertising, um, <clears throat> there's a reason why a lot of a lot of YouTubers will block their videos from India and Pakistan is because um, if the YouTube algorithm sees that most of the ads that you have on your video are being served in India and Pakistan. They're, they don't think that those people are going to spend money on those ads, so you get less ad revenue. People, it took a while for people to figure that out, but they were thinking that there's a billion people there, you know, and there's a lot of people there that have a lot of money, but they're all at the top, right? And so, just the way that the economy set up there, like most of the people watching your videos probably don't have that much money, and that's just that. At least that's what people think. I, I don't know that. I don't know the economic structure of India. I just don't. I don't. But um, WWE has given up on that territory. And uh, TNA, that used to be a, a top territory for TNA. And uh, it, uh, it it no longer is the case. Like, they have a TV deal there, but they are not, like, pushing she you know, like they were before. And they're not trying to do live shows there because they know that they're, they're not going to get a return on investment. If they, go to, if they go to India to try to do live show, they're just going to lose their ass in money. Um, I, think, I think Great Khali sold, like, 50,000 tickets, but they, I don't think he made any money on it for a, for an independent show that he did there. There's a lot of people, but the money just isn't there. And so um, if they did bring in gender, I don't think they're going to get the return that they think that they're going to get um, because, because of the audience that he brings with them is not a valuable like monetarily. And that, and that's why gender got cut and Sangha and Veer. And I think they had another Indian wrestler. They all got cut at the same time because WWE is act actively gave up on that, on that territory. Just like they did with uh, China, they gave up on uh, Zia Lee, right? And they had another Chinese wrestler. I think that during the last round of cuts, they had given up on too. So um, they tried. They tried to leverage it, but now they have Netflix. They don't need it. Um, I could see TNA trying to go for it, and I hope it works. Out. I, I'm not a fan of gender. I don't think he's good. I don't. He he's just a guy that kind of like went through developmental and then never got better. He has basic skill set. Got a little bit of charisma. Got a great look. Far as in the ring, very basic skill set. And he's just not a guy that's going to get over the company. And it's going to be another eye-rolling thing if they bring him in. But I could see them wanting to bring him in because people like him. He is a legacy, right? Like his, fa He's like from a wrestling family. And I could see them wanting to bring him in. Uh, Veer and Sangha, I think those guys are probably retired. Especially Veer. I think Veer is like, was a pro athlete. Um, before he came over to WWE, so I, I think I think he's retired. Von Wagner, who knows? Um, he could. Um, I, I could. I could see. I could see AEW bringing him in and kind of like a part of their developmental system to Ring of Honor. I could see them giving him a shot. And Trevor Lee too. I think the perfect home for Trevor Lee is TNA because I think that like right away he becomes a valuable commodity. Um, but I, I could also see him going to AEW and just kind of doing Ring of Honor stuff. So, um, but I, I, I think Trevor Lee should come to TNA and I think he should do the, the Mustafa Ali deal where he tours around and does all the top Indians. Cause I think they would like, they would like all the top Indians would want to have him because he's seen as a guy that never, um, that probably didn't get his just due in WWE. 
And um, so I, I think that I think that would be cool to see him back in TNA. I mean, he's a TNA guy too. So, but he's a very good wrestler, and he's probably got a lot of friends in a lot of places. So I, I could see Tony Khan wanting to hire the guy, especially after he. I think he was like crying on Twitter and uh, pulling on the heartstrings of the hardcores. And Tony likes to service those people, so I could see him bringing them in. So, um, as far as the rest of them, I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't got anything for <laughs> like, I don't know who Zion Quinn is. <laughs> I just never seen him wrestle. So Zylie, I don't know that much about her either. So I, I know she knocks shit out of people. So she wasn't very good. 